Okay, so for this final week of our awareness meditation training, we're continuing to explore bringing this experience of recognizing and resting in awareness, the simple feeling of being beyond formal practice and really where it's naturally part of our life. It's naturally part of who we are, but our kind of conscious experience of it. Um, what is what is that like to, to live in this awareness, attuned to this awareness. And this correlates to Garab Dorje's third statement, which we've explored in this training as a framework for practice around awareness. And more or less, you know, the simple translation paraphrase is continuing in confidence. So this is a good phrasing for it that, you know, we have confidence in our experience of awareness that we can experience it outside of formal practice, confidence in that this is who we are, okay? And I wanna talk a little bit more about what this means, confidence. And um, one of the translations that we explored of this was from Kim McLeod, a more experiential translation. And that one uh, is there, now let it unfold, let it unfold. So here you can see how we're moving beyond explicitly working with our uh, in informal practice around awareness using techniques it's like how do we let go of all the techniques and just let it unfold let it be let it unfold in our life now i uh i want to explore this continuing in confidence in three ways today in uh daily life in practice and in trust so daily life um, you know, the, the question here is how do we fully let go of, of feeling we, we need to practice in order to attune to awareness, to, to rest in awareness. Um, in practice, you know, continuing the confidence that we have tech, we're confident we have techniques we can work with that we can rely on and use them to make this a more natural part of who we are, that we can just do that spontaneously. And then co continuing in confidence and trust is going to be about well, regardless of what's happening in our daily life and regardless of what's happening in practice, how do we continue in trust? So even if it's not our experience in this moment, in life or in practice of resting in awareness, what's it like to, to cultivate this kind of trust? So let's start with continuing and confidence in daily life. So um, we've already talked about this in terms of, of living in the spontaneity of awareness and being um being able to attune to the qualities of awareness that we subjectively associate like um that awareness needs nothing is inherently whole spacious embracing of everything doesn't have a beginning or an end doesn't have boundaries and forms or a center what's it like to attune to those qualities amidst our life this is a question we can sit with minimally so what would it be like to have those moments at least, or live attuned in that way to awareness. In particular, what's it like to be attuned to these qualities, to, to recognize awareness, rest in awareness, in the midst of everything that is changing, in the midst of everything that is important in life, okay? Because we talk about awareness that everything's arising in awareness, and at first we're really letting go of, of uh, you know, being entangled with, with what's happening. But when we're going about our daily life, we're definitely paying attention and engaged and responding. Okay. So this is really probably the ultimate depth of, of, of realization here is that to stay attuned to that while being engaged with our life. Okay. Um, and so at this point, you know, we've talked about a lot of practices, including last week, you know, of, of incrementally moving beyond our typical formal practice. So that way we have a bridge into this way of living, of continuing confidence in our daily life. And so at a certain point, we, we just have to let go of talking about practice at all. And then we can start talking about what is life like? Like, and often it's done in a poetic manner. And I wanna share a few lines from Verses on the Faith Mind by uh, Sing San, the third Zen patriarch. And you can find, this is a really awesome teaching, very, sh it's short, 
And I have it in this uh, point two in my video, <laughs> this little small red book uh, right there in, on my shelf. Um, I think it's a little bigger now on Amazon, but it's Jack Kornfield was the editor and he, he put together a, a bunch of really lovely teachings from the Buddhist tradition and that one's in there. So a few lines, these are not in order. I just wanted to highlight them. Uh, <clears throat> the great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. The way is perfect like vast space where nothing is lacking and nothing is in excess. Live neither in the entanglements of outer things nor in inner feelings of emptiness. Okay, so here we have, for me, three instructions that you know point to, of course, how to practice or, or pointing out uh, awareness. Uh, uh, but it also, I think we can extrapolate here some pointers about what this is like in our daily life. So uh, not difficult for those who have no preferences. So that's interesting because in our daily life, we clearly have preferences and that's very, very normal. We're not trying to like go around and live our life in some neutral, completely neutral way. You know, we have our foods that we like, we have people who we're close with, we have work we like to do. So preferences in themselves are part of the creativity of, of being human. Um, so but what would it be like to also maintain a connection to this part of us, to this quality, this aspect of us that has no preferences? Awareness, like a mirror, as the analogy go, reflects everything that's put in front of it. So it has no preferences. So similarly, how can we stay attuned to this no preference quality even while we're engaging our preferences in life. Uh, the vast way, uh, the, the way is perfect like vast space where nothing is lacking and nothing is in excess. This is another way. What is it? There's awareness isn't lacking anything and it doesn't have excess, it just is. And so this is a quality, a dimension of ourselves that this quality also permeates our being. There's a part of us that lacks nothing and nothing is in excess. What's it like to stay attuned to that? while responding to life where things are lacking sometimes, where things are in excess, okay? How do we let these two blend? And then last, li uh, live neither in the entanglements of outer things nor in the uh, in inner feelings of emptiness. This is really great for continuing and deepening this awareness uh, practice. So we've talked a lot about entangling, so, and we've explored that a lot in, in, in the practice. So we get entangled with thoughts, entangled with feelings, entangled with phenomena, which means we sort of collapse awareness, our attention in, uh, on whatever is arising and we lose attunement to awareness itself, you know, in which all these things are arising. So um, what does it mean? But I like this word entanglement and, and disentangle because to disentangle doesn't mean to get rid of everything. It doesn't mean to get rid of all outer things. It means we're not entangled. So what is it like to be present in our life where we're not entangled, but yet we're present? So the, the, the answer there is not to like, again, get rid of things and, you know, and, and, and consider all the outer things to be problems to our uh, obstacles to us resting in awareness. So the flip side here then is also to not live in inner feelings of emptiness. So we're, again, we talked about that where it's like, oh, well, the, the answer here is to rest in emptiness. So we're trying to get to nothingness, you know, and, and that's the answer. So neither an entangled, but nor kind of spiritually bypassing or trying to just check out and live in emptiness. So these three lines are a lot to just sit with and feel into. I might even take this just out and about in the, in, in the day and just reflect on that line in the midst of a situation and then just see what happens, you know, in my experience. Does anything shift or naturally sort of unfurl? Now, another quote I wanna share here is from uh, Dong Shan's Five Ranks, and this is the commentary by Ross Belletter. It's one of my favorite books. Um, he says, it is completely present as we respond to the demands of family and colleagues. The genuine teaching of non-attachment manifests as our love and work. The empty, mysterious way, great way finds a home in our vulnerability and brokenness, no less so than it does in our admirable strengths and abilities. So this is pointing to this, our experience of resting in awareness 
is present throughout all of this, you know, our work, um, our relationships, our difficulties, the vulnerability, all of this is already included. And we, we already talked about that. We practiced in that in informal ways of trying to allow everything to just be, okay? Here, we're just extending that acknowledgement in the midst of our lives, okay? And then last, the, the, one more quote from Ross Belletter, uh, we can't sustain luminosity through all this. And if we try to, we're not really in our lives. So this here for me points to a little bit letting go of perfection, okay? Like some idea of maintaining some sort of perfect experience of awareness in life, that it needs to be a particular way, that our subjective experience needs to have a certain flavor to it. Um, and to explore that, to see if that comes up as you go about your daily life. Is there an expectation rising that, oh, it needs to be like this or this isn't it, okay? It's not to say that, I mean, I don't know, people, some people will say that, oh, no, it's totally possible to live in this way that we've been talking about in awareness like 24-7. Eh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> That's less important to me than, than a, a, an exploration and a deeper integration of this in the midst of life. I think that's really fruitful to explore. Okay, and then today when we practice, uh, we'll practice in a way that hopefully will help support this continuing and confidence in daily life uh, with awareness. And that's just freestyle noting. So here the freestyle part means we can note anything arising in our experience. One or two words. And we, just, and we put the word just in front of it. Now again, as a reminder, uh, just has more than one definition. It can mean just one thing as opposed to many things. It can have an emotional quality of dismissing something, especially when we talk about something emotional. Um, but here we mean it in the sense of it just is. Letting whatever's arising, just letting it be. That's the way in which we're using this word just here. So just letting go, just tenderness, just gratitude, just hearing. So anything, anything. So here we're radically including and allowing everything. Whereas in the previous practices, we were honing in on dimensions of our experience. So that way it was, we could be assured that we're not leaving it out, if that makes sense. So we, we focus on thoughts, feelings, the body, effort, and that's really useful. So, you know, if we tend to ignore our feelings, well, now we can incorporate that. We know we're also uh, experiencing feelings as not uh, in opposition to awareness. But here we're, we have no boundaries, okay? Just like awareness. Now, the second area of continuing confidence in practice. And I'll share a quote here from Namkai Norobu and from the Crystal and the Way of the Light. So he says, the absolute spontaneous non-dual awareness of the primordial state experienced in contemplation is self-perfected and thus beyond all effort. In this state, there's nothing to practice, nothing that must be done, and nothing that cannot be done. But whenever the individual is not in uh, the state of contemplation, effort must be applied to recognize this fact and to bring about a return to contemplation. So this says, again, this is the paradox, you know, with all, with all this training and, and, and awareness meditation practice. So... Um, how we continue in confidence here is that, okay, if, if this, if we don't, feel attuned to awareness, or we find it difficult in daily life, we have confidence that we have practices that we can return to that can help us uh, in a sort of way miraculously without any sort of rational you know, equation here that produces the experience, uh, that somehow it helps us to make this more of our lived experience. So really briefly, I want to review the practices we've explored in this training. We've done this in three phases, okay? So phase one was pointing out awareness so that we have even the briefest experience of it, okay? That, ah, here it is, okay, this is awareness. And we did that through uh, social meditation using phrases, letting go, returning, listening, 
So these phrases to help us recognize awareness. We used concentration and coasting. So concentrating in a very brief manner, then letting go of concentration and hopefully recognizing and resting, particularly in the open, empty aspect of awareness. And then when attention uh, collapses, we get into stories and whatever, then we return to concentration, repeat, uh, release, and rest. And we did that through counting breath. So counting to 10, for example, then releasing and resting, repeating that. We also focused on a visual object, okay? Fi uh, fixating very briefly for a few seconds and then releasing. We also um, did just six sense noting. So in this way, we uh, were seeing form as not being a problem and form as a way to recognize awareness, okay? So, um, you know, just seeing and just hearing that, okay, yeah, form is part of awareness too. Okay, so the empty part in the in the form arising in, in awareness. Second phase, we worked explicitly with what feels like uh, seeming ob obstacles in practice. And we did that through thoughts, body, emotions, and effort. So thoughts, we did popping thoughts in awareness, using the word pop when uh, we got distracted enough in returning to awareness. Uh, we explored some embodied awareness practices from realization process from Judith Blackstone. So inhabiting the body, experiencing awareness, permeating the body um, so that, you know, sensations and everything can arise in it, but still that, that quality of awareness permeates our experience, even through the body. Um, emotions. We did just noting emotions. So that same experience that noting whatever emotions coming up without seeing it as an obstacle to this resting and awareness. And then effort, which is a big deal. Often a focal point of awareness meditation is letting go of effort. We did um, non-dual perception meditation from the realization process. So just allowing sounds and visuals to be in the space, but still staying attuned to that space and experiencing that space pervading us and all the sounds and visuals. Uh, we use binary noting, effort, no effort. So to note that in our experience and seeing how that oscillates. And then uh, finally, just noting, just sitting. So just sitting, as simple as it can be. So, you know, effort arises, but we return to that just sitting over and over again. Then in the last phase that we've been in now, we've been working on integrating uh, uh, our experience of awareness beyond formal practice uh, and a more spontaneous experience of it not dependent on uh, practice. So first we explored loving awareness, um, which helped to drop this experience of awareness into the body, okay? The, this experience of heartfulness helps to do that. So we're not limiting our experience, you know, to the to like the, the top part of our ourselves. And so we use phrases, may I know loving awareness, am I, uh, I am loving awareness, loving awareness, and uh, doing all three of those spontaneously as well. Then we explored the movement and spontaneity. So all of our uh, physical capacities are different, you know, depending on our life. Um, but whatever we consider our normal formal practice, so if our formal practice is sitting still with eyes closed, we start moving beyond that. So whatever we normally don't consider part of formal practice, we start incrementally moving uh, with that. So moving the eyes, moving the head, moving the arms, um, moving in whatever way we, we can through our environment. Okay. Um, so lots of practices that each of them in, in many ways are subtle in nature, but they, they provide different doorways into our experience of awareness. And so with this, hopefully you can continue in confidence with practice and have something to return to. Now I wanna talk about continuing in confidence in trust. So again, this is like life ebbs and flows, practice ebbs and flows that regardless of our experience, it's really interesting. Somehow we still show up for practice, right? Even if throughout the day, maybe only part of the day, we have a little bit of experience of this uh, simple feeling of being in awareness. And yet we show up. And to me, that inherently is trust. We can use different words, okay? Confidence, trust, and faith. 
but there, this is really interesting to highlight. So how do we, you know, trust in awareness? Um, and I want to share um, one more passage here from verses on the faith mind. One thing, all things move among and intermingle without distinction. To live in this realization is to be without anxiety about non-perfection. To live in this faith um, is the road to non-duality because the non-dual is one with the trusting mind. So this is a nice passage again to just sit with and say the words. It's not something that we have to figure out and go, oh, okay, yep, yep. You know, it's not a rational thing. It's bringing us into our experience. But there's a few pointers there. So um, trusting here, you know, it, to, to be without anxiety about non-perfection. So in the midst, in the, in the midst of experiencing imperfection, mm, maybe things start to shake. Oh, this isn't it, right? because the experience should be perfect, right? And so to continue practicing and to relax in an imperfection, I call, I would label that trust for me. That's the experience of trust. Because even though I'm reacting to the imperfection, I'm letting go still. That letting go can be described as trust. It's interesting that this passage also used the word faith and the title is verses on the faith mind, which is really s remarkable. Um, in the uh, context of the Buddhist tradition, right? Because it's not a tradition that's normally thought of being of faith, like maybe the Christian tradition, right? So it's interesting that that word is used here, but it's neither here nor there in a certain sense. So like if another word works for you better, like confidence or trust, then if faith is a problematic word, that's okay. But I think it's really interesting that that word is used here. I mean, I don't know the the uh, what the original uh, language said, and that was a translator choice but it's there. And um, so to me, it points to this fact that no, we really mean something beyond like some rational conclusion and being with ourselves in a way that we can't uh, necessarily know. We're just there, you know, so it ties into not knowing as well. And it's really interesting here as well that it says, because the non-dual is one with the trusting mind. Mm. We, maybe we can describe the experience of just resting in awareness as trusting, inherently trusting, because it, in that experience, we don't have to do anything with what's arising. It's not about doing or not doing. So that could be described as trusting inherently. I know that word has a lot of meaning. So, you know, we're talking about that word in the context of this awareness meditation training. We're not talking about it in the sense of uh, relationships and things. That's a totally different <laughs> context for that word. Um, so, uh, one more quote here from Dongshan's five ranks and this commentary from Ross Belletter around this, like, what is it like to, to trust in this way beyond practice in life? So he says, we don't know what will happen yet. We continue to plan and it takes courage to imagine and plan for an unimaginable future to sink pylons for an imaginary bridge and airy nothingness. I like this quote a lot. So this uh, unimaginable future, imaginary bridge and airing nothingness points to this when we're attuned to awareness, inherently we're, we're gonna attune to the empty dimension, the nebulosity, the word that uh, David Chapman uses for his work in meaningness, the nebulosity of, of, of life. And yet we plan and yet we do things in life. So to me, there's something there to explore. What is it like to live in that way that we're not just trying to check out and go to the, the airy nothingness and yet we're not entangled by what's happening. So we're building bridges. We're planning for the future nonetheless. So to me, there's an aspect of, of letting go in there. And then finally, uh, he says, the gaze uh, takes in our life with its suffering and delight without fuss or concern. Whose providence is this long, beautiful evening? Whose providence is this year of failed enterprises? Whose providence is this great earth which rolls through space with its living and its dead, its marriages and burials? We take on the mystery of that. We live out and die into the mystery of that. So it's, it's inevitable that an awareness meditation training to me would also lead to insights, you know, to, to what is pointed to and an awakening in a Buddhist tradition. And so here, this path, I think, for me, leads to an experience of mystery and letting go. And in the midst of life, someone asked me in the group yesterday about 
you know, I want to integrate this more in my life. And, you know, with mindfulness, there's sort of like a constant uh, reminder, like, oh, I'm going to be mindful now. I'm going to be mindful now, which is really good in mindfulness. But in awareness, you know, we're letting go of attention, uh, uh, in, intention, right? So it's paradoxical. It's like, whoa, if I try to make a bunch of intention throughout the day, it might be an obstacle to just relaxing in, in awareness, which needs nothing. But for me, one way to, to do this is to mix this experience of mystery, this wonder throughout our day, to look at our life in a wondrous, mysterious way, like we've never seen it before. So even walking around our homes, you know, and environments to, to, to get a sense of that mystery. And this is harder to, to describe because it's, again, it's not like a one, two, three instruction that you can maintain. But for me, that's the different experiences, like walking around in mystery without expectations. And that to me is a little bit of trust. So finally, to wrap this up, I want to uh, share with you this. Mm, it's kind of like a refuge prayer uh, uh, to awareness. It's from Ajahn Sumedho from uh, Intuitive Awareness. And it goes like this. Awareness is your refuge. Awareness of the changingness of feelings, of attitudes, of moods, of material change and emotional change. Stay with that because it's a refuge that is indestructible. It's not something that changes. It's a refuge that you can trust in. This refuge is not something that you can create. It's not a creation. It's not an ideal. It's very practical and very simple, but easily overlooked or not noticed. When you're mindful, you're beginning to notice it's like this. So in terms of trust, I was also contemplating that in, you know, in Tibetan Buddhist tradition, there's a lot of prayers like this. You know, that's the, this is the kind of vibe about, you know, like of, of praying in the Buddhist tradition or like an aspirational prayer, right? Of like, oh, even if I, this is not my experience now, I take refuge in this awareness because I've tasted it, you know, I know that this is who I am. So there's a sense of aspiring to that, you know, of, of giving ourselves over to that, this experience, which we know to be ourselves. And even in the midst of, of that experience of awareness, seeing it as a refuge, you know, seeing these qualities that, of it, that it's not changing, it's not an ideal, um, it's not something that's, that you can create and therefore we can trust in it. And it uses that word trust. Okay, so um, that's something you can use in practice to continue in confidence and in trust in your daily life.